What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're all doing well, wherever you're tuning in from, in today's video, we're diving into a thought-provoking segment from a lengthy live stream lecture by Dr. Sam Richards at Penn State University. He tackles the complex issues of the woke double standard and racism in a way that really makes you think. So, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so this guy got fired for dropping the N-bomb. So let me walk you through. So if you want to fire this guy for walking the M-bomb, this guy here, he said it in the context of quoting, talking about somebody else in history. Okay, then this is where we're going to go, right here. So this guy, Marlon Anderson, security guard at a school district in Madison, Wisconsin, at a high school in Madison, Wisconsin. Some kid in the school is being disruptive. The tier principal calls for help, calls the school guard, and is being like, they're trying to take this guy out of the school. Calls Marlon over, like, Marlon, help out. We got to take this guy out. The kid's fighting. He's like yelling stuff. He's yelling obscenities. And he starts calling this guy the end bomb. And then Marlon puts up with it. He's like, dude, stop that. As he's like wrestling him out of the building. Stop that. Dude, stop calling me that. Stop, stop calling me that word. And he's getting him out of the building. Stop calling me that. Come on, man. Really, stop. And the two of them, and finally, Marlon says, stop calling me N-bomb. Got it? Well, what Marlon forgot was the high school has a zero tolerance policy for saying N-bomb. So the kid was going to get expelled, but he gets, exp he gets fired. And the principal comes forward with a statement to people, to all the family members. Here she is, right here. So she says, she sends a letter informing them that a staff member, a staff member would not be returning to the school. And she writes, as you know, our expectation when it comes to racial slurs has been made very, very clear. Regardless of context or circumstances, racial slurs are not acceptable in our schools. So, my friends, you want to fire Papa John? You think he should be fired? Well, then he should be fired. Because he broke a zero-tolerance policy. Why wouldn't he be fired? Oh, well, he can't because it's a little different. What's the difference? It's just as absurd. Really, what's the difference? What's the difference? I'm going to push you on that. I can point the differences. I can, I'm, I'm smart enough. I can see that these are different situations and so on. And I'm going to push back and be like, what's the difference? Hang on, this is just rhetorical. And then she is the one that writes the letter saying, Sorry, Marlon had to go because he broke our zero tolerance policy. He ultimately got his job back because so many people, including students at the school, were upset and bothered and so on. Same people that didn't come to the defense of John Schneider from Papa John. They didn't come, I'm sure they didn't come to his defense, but they came to his defense. So this is where we go. You're gonna, this, is, this is the world we're going to go in. If we want to have these kinds of, you know, we're going to have language police and action police and thought police and so on. You want to walk up that aisle? Well, we're going to walk up the other aisles also. This is where we're at. And then what's really the problem here? We're not paying attention to racism as though like Papa John is the problem. As though this guy here is the problem. No, racism and violence against everybody, but disproportionately against people who are black and brown seems to me to be the problem. And against women, I should add. But we get ourselves all rolled up in a ball in all these other ways. Let's start with the irony. How funny is it that the principal in this situation was literally named Karen? But jokes aside, this situation really highlights the importance of context in life. Having a strict zero-tolerance policy that can end someone's career without considering the full picture is just absurd. Imagine losing your job, your income, and your ability to support your family over something like this. It's not just unfair, it's ridiculous. Take, for example, the N-word. It's a word I would never use or want to use, 
and I understand how deeply offensive it can be. But context matters. I read about a university professor who was fired simply for reading the word aloud from a history book during a lesson. He wasn't using it to insult anyone. He was just reading the text verbatim, yet that cost him his job. Now, don't get me wrong. The N-word is a vile term to use against someone, and I completely get why it's offensive. But should someone be fired for reading it in an educational context? Or like in this case, where a teacher simply said, Stop calling me the N-word? The fact that we judge whether someone can say this word based on their skin color is another layer of complexity. It's a word that, depending on your pigmentation, you're either allowed to say or not, and that's just bizarre to me. Again, I want to stress that I'm not advocating for using the word. It's despicable, but the idea that you could lose your livelihood over saying it, regardless of context, is a scary thought. In today's climate, being labeled a racist can destroy your career, whether it's true or not. And once that label sticks, it's hard to come back from it. You could be blacklisted from your industry entirely. It's crazy that we've reached a point where people are losing their jobs and their means of survival over words. Any words. Really, without considering the intent or context, whether it's race or gender, it shouldn't come to this. But that's where we are. All right, let's get back to the video. Video. So here, I got another one for you. How many know who she is? You see, this, this just came out in the news. So a woman says Denver Arena guard told her to remove a hijab. So she was going to the arena in Denver to see her, one, her, one of her children was singing in a choir, I think. So she shows up at the arena. And the hijab, from what I could see in the photos, her, her covering was more or less um, very similar to this. So she shows up, and the security guard says, as she's walking up, Walk up toward me. You're going to get in. Stop, stop, stop. You can't come in with that. You got to take that off. And then she says, what do you mean I got to take it off? Like, no, no, no. You got to take it off. So she says, this, I wear this for religious reasons. Um, I, I, re I, I don't want to take it off. She says, I don't care why you wear that thing. That thing, you're taking it off if you want to come in. It's like, okay. So she says, she says to the guard, um, do you think there's a play, and she's with her child. She says, do you think there's a room where we could go? Like kind of a secure room that's where I could take it off. And, you know, because she's kind of modest about taking her job off. And the guard says, no, there's nothing like that. You, you, got, you, got, you, get, you have to go. Push, sort of waves her away. So this woman is like, oh my God, what, what am I going to do? So... Pretty quickly, this all happens really fast. A guy comes out from a rent in this other area. He walks over, assesses the situation really fast, and apparently tells his, pulls the security guard aside, and first off, and then waves her through. Very fast. It's like 30, maybe 40 seconds. And then the security guard comes back out, so they talk to her briefly, and she comes back out and doesn't say anything, doesn't really interact with her, but this woman gets in. She goes through the metal detector, she, the metal detector goes off because her cell phone was in her pocket, and she had to come back and get the cell phone out and so on, and it was fine, and she gets in. So the whole thing takes an additional maybe 45 seconds or so, not very long. Okay, cool? Got it? So the idea is the security guard is clearly out of line and it's a problem because you don't know what hijab is and you don't understand anything about this this head covering and muslim women and so on and so you know come on man are you kidding me what do you mean she's coming to you saying it's for religious reasons what do you know like why aren't you aware why don't you know why don't you understand what's going on so then this is a problem so the council on islamic uh Affairs and in, in Islamic American relations, you know, they get involved and they put up press release and, you know, I forget what they said, but, you know, something like this is um, just really terrible. This is an indication of what, you know, what happens to Muslim people and so on. And she didn't make like a major, major deal over it, but she'd put out a Facebook post and say, hey, this happened to me. And that's how it blew up. And it blew up such that when I went online, when I Google looked at it, it's just, it's everywhere. These are just images, but each one is the same story over and over and over again. 
Here's the problem with this. Here's what makes it complicated. What do you, what do you, think about what you're thinking about the security guard. She's a 71-year-old African-American woman. So people are calling for her to be fired, calling for a lawsuit against the Denver Nuggets arena, calling for a lawsuit against the security company, calling for them, all sorts of things happening. The security guard, set, first off, she's 71 years old. I'm like, all right, man, you've been on the planet 71 years, but she's not up on his jobs. Can we go back to Papa John? We want to play in that world where you do one thing wrong, one thing wrong, and we could even have arguments about what is and isn't wrong. What if he accidentally says, drops the end bomb, but he was trying to make say another word and he accidentally said that one and like, oh my God, how far do we want to go? So if we want to play in that world of utter condemnation for the slightest thing that we do wrong, the slightest mistake we made, well then the black security guards should get fired. The whole Denver organization could get sued. I mean, how far do you want to go with it? First off, it's the same thing as the other story. It's like black secu look, security guard. Can you just stop with the hand waving and you're not coming in here with that? First off, this woman said there were men in the lobby when they were getting with baseball caps on. Of course, and I'm like, I, she's not making that shit up because there are men everywhere with baseball. If there are more than three men, there's at least one baseball cap. So like, why, aren't they, why are they getting in? You know what I mean? Like, come on. Or did you make them all take, did you make them all take the cap off and see if there's something under the cap? Did you like, I, she's asking, can we go to a private room? Could you like, maybe we could just, I could, I could take it off. I could show you I don't have anything underneath. No, 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 we can't do that. Okay, well, okay, so she, she could have just whipped it off. Like the men probably would just whip their cap off and be like, yeah, see, I'm good. Like, all right, good. But she's not. It's different for her. Wearing a hijab, covering her hair is different than, you know, you wearing the, the baseball cap or you or whoever. I'm, what, I, what I'm saying, I don't know. There's, nobody's right. Nobody's wrong. All I know is when we start pointing our fingers at things, at people, you know, three are coming back at us, and it, it's going to be a problem. Did this security guard get fired? Did she get fired? Yeah. Nah, they just pull oh, her okay. aside and be like, come on, man, let's bring you up. Come on, let's bring you up to speed. Here's this thing. It's called a job. She was probably like, yeah, I kind of heard of them, but I got, she probably doesn't know any Muslim women. She probably hasn't really thought. It's one of these things, like, just like, like he's asking, like, yeah, but I don't really know about the hijab. So, like, I don't know. Can you work? Just like, remember when we talked about hair? And, like, people don't know about hair. They don't know about black hair. They don't know about anything. People don't know about anything. Right? You gotta got to hand it to Sam Richards. He really knows how to make students think and ask the tough questions. It's not about whether you agree or disagree with him. What's important is that he's sparking these crucial conversations. This is exactly what teachers should be doing encouraging critical thinking and open dialogue. In classes like these, the goal used to be learning how to think critically, and Sam Richards is definitely pushing those boundaries. It's impressive that, as an older white guy, he's still out there having these discussions, honestly. I'm surprised he's managed to stay in that position given today's climate, when he talks about that older lady. There's a chance she just doesn't know better, sure. She could be racist against Muslims and ignorant about the hijab. Or maybe she's just uninformed but again, context matters. Now, if that had been an older white man in her shoes, I guarantee you he would have been fired, label her racist, and it would have been all over the news. This is why these kinds of classes and conversations are so important, especially because, for the left, you'll never fully meet the moral standards they set. These woke ideologues on the left are laser-focused on two things, race and gender. If that older black lady had been a white man, it would have been game over. All right, let's get back to the video. So. Okay, so I am lucky enough to be enlightened in certain subjects. No, hang on. Not enlightened. Don't say enlightened. Okay, you're informed. lucky. You're I'm lucky informed. enough, or by chance, right. you know about certain okay. things. Okay, so we'll go with what he said. And um, my one, I have a couple of things. My first thing is, how do you have an 81-year-old... 71. 71, sorry, security guard in a... Well, 
Well, she's not really arena. a security guard. I mean, I she's not chasing anybody down. You know, not like this dude or this dude. <laughs> Like, you know, she's just taking tickets and stuff. It's, it's like the uh, the guy on Barstool, if you ever saw the security guard at Beaver Stadium, who's, like, barely touching the people yeah. that he's checking. It's kind of like that, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And um, <laughs> when you, like, explain the situation, I feel like she's 100% wrong because that's, like, acting... I feel like... There's a lot of prejudice against the hijab, and like for someone to ask them to take it off, unless you're in an airport, that's a whole different situation. And me and TSA are not friends, so I'm cool with that. Yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> but like, that's my scenario would be like asking someone to take off their cross because okay. you're wearing a cross, or okay. like the Star of David, or something. Okay, so let me just say the following. That that's a good, that's a really nice response. I will say the following. My imagination of her is actually that it's just as likely instead of her being like really aggressive and she knows what it is and she's just like F you Muslims or whatever, right? She's actually just totally unknowing about any of it. She's like, no, you're, you're wearing a hat. Like, no, take it off. Like, whatever. I, that she's just as like, ah, whatever. It's, as anything else. It's just as likely that that's very much the story and we don't know. But um, I was just going to say, like, to answer the question about the hijab, um, it's like, in terms of taking it off, let's say you um, get asked to take off your shirt. Like, taking off your shirt exactly. isn't necessarily, like, difficult. It's just, like, it's exposing. So, like, she wouldn't want to take that off in front of other people, and she might want a private room. Or it's, like, let's say a teacher says, take off your hat in class. It's not hard to take off your hat. It's just, like, you feel exposed when you take it off, so you don't want to take it off in yep, front of exactly. people. Yep, exactly. No, I, I think is. that, yeah, that's the kind of thing, right? For me, look, y'all, right? Look. Yins, for the Pittsburgh folks, yins. What this class is about is an opportunity to touch on lots and lots of different things so that we don't become the security guard. It seems really obvious to me, but it's not obvious to everybody. So it's like, okay. Wait, who else? Well, can we make one, can one, one, one I, final thing, man? I would also say that it's almost like the comment that was made last class about eating pork with a Muslim father, it's like, it's a form of disrespect. Like when you ask somebody totally. to do that, it's like, it's a form of disrespect. Yeah, totally, man. Wait, all right, go ahead, what do you think? Um, my problem with her isn't the fact that she was like ignorant on hijabs, it's the fact that after she asked for a private room and explained that it was a religious- She still said no. She still said no. Yeah, so. yeah, I know, that's kind of, that yeah. seems, but you know, maybe it's really busy, there's a million people. I'm, look, I'm, look, look at me. I'm the guy that's trying to make excuses for a 71 year old black woman who's clearly being ignorant and racist. And I'm like, I'm doing, you, you hear what I'm doing? I'm doing the thing that, so a lot of you, you complain that like, well, when you tell you about racism, you say, yes, but it might have been this other thing, and it might have been that. And here I am doing that for a 71-year-old black woman. I'm like, yo, y'all, maybe she did this, or maybe she was that, or like, I'm like, I'm that guy. Great video. I really enjoy these lectures. Sam's channel is fantastic. I don't always agree with him, and I don't always disagree, but what matters? is that he's asking the right questions and teaching in a way that gets people thinking and engaging. That's what education should be all about. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel to help it grow. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out everyone.